Hey everyone, today let's talk about Doodle World. So just a few days ago, I heard someone mention this game on a live stream, so I decided to go check it out. Obviously, this game is inspired in part by Pokemon, and I've gotta say, it's one of my favorites that I've seen so far. I really think it's unique that they call them doodles, and they have their own little style with like the graphic kind of scribbled look. I like it a lot, and I think it's pretty charming. Though it is somewhat new of a game, there are several hours of storyline gameplay out right now, so I would really recommend that you check it out. But to get to the main point of this video, I'm gonna be talking about my misprint hunting of Niblin. As I did play many of the Pokemon games and I shiny hunted in so many of them, I'm not the most hardcore shiny hunter in the world. I'm not the type to spend 12 hours straight looking for one color variant. Recently I've kind of enjoyed grinding on this game because other games that I've been playing, there's not as much to do right now. Plus, I've needed a new game to complete to its fullest, per se. So let's get on to the actual misprint hunting itself. So there are several other rare variants of different doodles you can get in the game. Of course, there are misprints, which are the equivalent to shinies. There's also different skins that you can unlock for each doodle, hidden trait chances and one to five star chances, as well as tints. But for my method, all that I was concerned about was the misprint rate. So the basic misprint rate with no chain at all is one out of 4,000. But with every 10 doodles that you chain, you get one to the numerator of that chance. And if you're curious about your chain, you can look at the number in the bottom right hand corner and you can see how many you're on at the moment. One other thing to note is that if you're over a chain of 100, killing a random doodle will not break your chain. I literally killed a bone sweet on accident when I was over 100 and I literally almost cried because I thought it would break my chain. <laughs> But thank goodness it doesn't. One thing I will say about chaining is that it seems pretty easy and it was relatively fast for getting a misprint. It only took me like two, three hours maybe, probably a little bit less than that. I actually did get a tinted doodle that I'm gonna put right here. I can show you. It was like cyan or something, which I think is pretty cool. I ran away from it because I was kind of shocked at first, but that's not really what I was looking for. And it wasn't too much longer before I got what I was waiting for. My Miss Prince Niblin, which I did name Legendies because, you know, he's legendary and also Dees is a funny joke and that's what I named my original Mothra. Um, anyways, my immediate course of action as soon as I get any type of shiny or anything is to go level it up. So that's what I went to do. I didn't consult the wiki, I figured I can do this by myself, so I ran around and I was trying to click on all the trainers. I'm like, hmm, can you fight these guys over again? I don't know. But that's what I tried for like a solid 10 minutes before I was like, you're stupid, go look at the wiki. So I looked at the wiki and it turns out there's this guy Jack on route four, I think, that you can battle for experience. Like, yeah, that'll be the easiest way to level them up in my party after just defeating this easy battle is what I thought but I was very wrong. So I waddled all the way back to Route 4 to find Jack. And the first attempt was going pretty well. I took out most of his team with my Squelly. And then once it got to the Pompobor, it started to get bad. So basically I did like no damage and then I got a super effective hit and I died basically. So after that, I just took out Wheezy and got a burn on him and that was pretty easy except I lived on two health. Next, you have the stupid Merrygrim. It went so downhill for me after this. Like this one thing, this one doodle kept my whole team out from winning. So basically I could get super effective hits in with my Lipo, but it didn't really do much damage. The next unfair thing, it puts you to sleep and then uses an attack that hurts you so much. And then if you wake up from that attack, it puts you back to sleep because it's a song. I'm like, how am I supposed to come back from this? Anyways, I managed to get poison on it and that kind of worked until I brought out my Borbeck to try and finish it off, but I realized I'm stupid and the Borbeck does not have any moves left because of me chaining. So I was hanging on by a thread and then I'm like, please, all I have left is Legend Ds. You better be able to finish this battle that way you can evolve, right? So I sent him out and Mary Grimm had so low health and he died in one hit. So after that defeat, I ran all the way back to Jack and I decided to fight him again. So this time I was smart and I looked at the type 
effectiveness chart and so I could use this to my advantage. Everything went pretty well. I sweeped everything with my kaleidoskunk and then got to the pompadour which took me out a lot. Then time for the Merigrim again. I chipped away at his health for so long with all of my teammates until all I had left was Legendies again. And you know what happened this time? He died again. I couldn't win, so I resulted to the loser strategy of fighting wild doodles to level them up. Anyways, here's the misprint forms of Toxic Pupa and Mothra. And yeah, that was my adventure for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you guys like this kind of stuff, I might make more videos on this topic. Just let me know. Also consider liking and subscribing, it helps me out a lot. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.